The Savior's Patch is hitting hard, and today, I'll guide you through the most important parts of it. Howdy howdy legends, my name is Zephyr, and after watching this video, you'll find out everything you need to know about the new patch to make sure that you're up to speed. Before we tackle the notes though, it's time for our question of the day. What changes are you most anticipating for this upcoming patch, and what would you like to see in the near future? Let me know in the comment section below. First up, we have another new legend, Newcastle, the Heroic Defender. With the leak turning out to be true, we can be curious about other upcoming legends. Soon, TM of course. But now let's talk business. Newcastle's passive is called Retrieve the Wounded. This enables you to drag allies as you revive them while protecting them with your revive shield. Next to that, we have his tactical, Mobile Shield. Throwing this ability deploys a controllable drone which creates a moving energy shield. Perfect to gain a moment of respite if you ask me, especially when you have to cover difficult angles. For his ultimate ability, we have something totally new and spicy, the Castle Wall. Leaping to an ally or target area and slamming down creating a fortified stronghold doesn't only sound cool, but it's also super powerful. Did we mention it also slows and damages anybody who touches it? We're definitely interested in seeing how this legend can shake up the meta with his unique defensive tools. If you want to check it out yourself, he'll be playable today, and you can expect a detailed guide later this week. New season, new updates to maps, and this time an update for the monstrous map. Stormpoint gets its first update, adding more content, improving features, and showing off brand new POIs. Ready to meet up a washed up sea creature and experience unique combat? Look out for the downed beast as well as the newly added PvE feature, the IMC armories at four strategic locations around the map. Including the map update, we also have a change for the map rotations. Firstly, we'll get Stormpoint, Olympus, and World's Edge into the rotation, but here's the real deal. They're removing the two hour rotation block as they felt it was too long. Another anticipated change comes to the ranked queues. We're receiving tier demotions, entry cost adjustments, and a rework to ranked points to promote team play. Long story short, they've shifted RP gains towards the entire squad. So if your ally gets a kill, you also get RP for that. There's also no more kill cap, by the way. But obviously, the base value of a kill is reduced, and the more you get, the more they diminish in value. For tiered emotions, you'll be protected for three games upon promotion to a newer tier. After that grace period, you're able to get demoted again. But if you want some extra security to stop you from demoting, I'd recommend checking out ProGuides.com. We have the best coaches out there that will help you reach the next level. When it comes to reaching the next level, we're also happy to see the Savior's Battle Pass. For the free version, you can earn a Crypto Skin, 7 Apex Packs, 12 Weapon Skins, 3 Load Screens, Trackers for all Legends, 2 Music Packs, 300 Apex Coins, and a Seasonal Badge. With the premium version, you'll get the chance to earn much more. Rare sets for Fuse, Bloodhound, Pathfinder, Mad Maggie, and Newcastle, including numerous weapon skins. If you're a fan, you should definitely pick it up. Now it's time for the balance changes. Fortified Legends will not be receiving reduced headshot damage anymore. Too bad for them, but it had to go eventually. Similar to that, we're also saying goodbye to the R301 and Rampage as they're moving into the Crafter, whereas the Flatline and Longbow turn into Floor Loop. For golden items, we'll have the EVA 8, the Bow, the Flatline, the community's not-so-favorite weapon, the P2020, and the Spitfire. To compensate for the earlier Fortified Legend headshot change, we're getting a general adjustment to helmet strength. The blue's damage reduction is increased by 10%, and the purple helmets by a whopping 15%. If you pair this with the next change, you'll see a pattern in the direction that respawn's heading. The Kraber is also getting a nerf in terms of its headshot multiplier, reducing it from 3.0 to 2.0, while also reducing its base damage from 145 to 140 is quite the significant change. Another change we see is that the Rampage's reload time is increased by 0.5 seconds while slightly increasing its handling speed. The following changes are for energy weapons, and man, we're all going down bad. The L-Star, which is not really the favorite gun of most people, is getting slapped. Headshot damage multiplier down, headshot distance down, overhead cool-off time up, and an increased handling time. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Devotion is also getting the same treatment, including even more nerfs to draw, handling, raise, and lower time. 
but at least the Havoc gets an improved recoil pattern. Another removal of this patch is going to be the Dual Shell Hop-Up. It'll be gone from Floor Loot and the Crafting Bundle. Maybe this time, we won't even hear the infamous line Mozambique here as a meme and finally get to like it even more. Both the Mozam and the Peacekeeper are getting buffs to their limb damage. Won't change too much for the aim demons, but if you happen to miss quite a big chunk of your pellets, this damage can make the difference. If you want some personalized tips when it comes to aim practice and overall movement in fights, I can only recommend you check out ProGuides.com. This patch's care package has the Spitfire regarded as floor loot and the Mastiff now an heirloom weapon. Among that change, we're also seeing balances to both. The Spitfire is basically nerfed on every level possible. From raw damage to mag size with higher rarity attachments, draw and holster times, headshot damage, and even losing its barrel attachment slot. In comparison to the Mastiff, spread is tightened, ammo cap reduced, but the damage per pellet is increased. If you hit your shot, it sounds amazing, but if you happen to miss, you're going to be feeling bad as you're asking to get revived. To add to that notion of healing and reviving, we're also seeing a lower spawn rate of cells and syringes. For Legends, we received changes to Valkyrie and Rampart. While Rampart is getting a buff in terms of spin-up time and her deployable cover, Valk on the other hand can no longer freely spin while launching during her Skyward Dive. For me, it sounds like a change that'll make sure you start off that ability within decent cover, unless you want to get shot down. For competitive integrity, we're probably seeing the biggest change so far in a long time. Abusing the out-of-bounds area to fully reset a fight will no longer be possible as the following is disabled. You'll be unable to use Legend's abilities, weapons, ordinances, survival items, and all active passives. I'm just happy to finally see this change, and I'm pretty sure every pro is ecstatic about it too. Another change, or should I say fix, that everyone loves to see is the third-party kill-stealing fix. Now kills are finally earned again and not just given. Similar to those changes that specifically tackle long-standing issues within pro play, we're also getting further improvements to the custom match system. Quality of life improvements, new parameters for the observer, an updated color palette, and an updated version of team elimination text for the anonymous mode. And last but not least, there are some changes to the World's Edge map. Windows at Lava Siphon's control tower are now redesigned while the area around Lava Pit receives some additional cover. In terms of nerfs, we're seeing a reduction of finding high-tier armor within the gondolas, which doesn't change the fact that the related POIs remain high-tier loot zones. The arena map is also seeing a few changes. The overall pricings of items is getting tackled. Here's a list of everything so you can take a gander at it. To conclude this rundown, we're seeing a lot of bug fixes, so we're looking forward to less frustrating encounters with those and more happy times with the mechanics working as intended. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll see you soon for everything Apex.